Hey everyone, my name is Reef James. I'm an RF engineer uh, who's recently started getting into helium hotspots, helium mining, and, and trying to figure out what it's all about. All right. uh, I got my hotspot in, I think, January, and I've had it set up at home without an external antenna uh, since then. Uh, we're into April now. I've recently started setting up a, uh, a mast for an external antenna, and I've got an external antenna, a 9 dBi antenna. Uh, People love to hate the 9 dBi antennas, but we're going to see if it works well. I, I know it's going to work well. All right. Um, the main reason that I have left it so long is I kind of want to see, you know, I, I just want to show that having an external antenna is, it, it's going to make such a day and night difference, right? I've had my miner just sitting on a windowsill with the stock antenna um, and it's been earning peanuts, like, like hardly anything, right? And I'm going to get big external antenna up about seven meters in the air, and we're going to we're going to see a day a day and night difference uh, is my is my uh, educated guess on on our earnings here. So it's not all finished yet. I do have all the gear here, so let's go and and do it. Cheers. Editing roof here. Just want to pause and say that this. I mean, you can tell by the length of the video. It's a bit of a long form video. Uh, I don't really like skip over too many details. Um, I enjoy, personally, I enjoy watching videos like this. So I'm gonna try and make videos like this. Uh, and also it's more targeted at people who haven't done this kind of thing before. Uh, so I, you know, kind of try not to gloss over too many steps. So uh, if you're trying to do this yourself, you can kind of follow along. Cheers. Um. This is pretty exciting. I don't have everything, but we'll get most of it done, okay? You'll see it all in the video. Uh, this is the footing that I set up over the weekend with my mates. All right, so this is mounting the uh, antenna mast into the 2. Point, I think 2.4, 2.8 meter, uh, 60 mil diameter gal uh, pipe. So basically we just slot it down, you know, about a foot. You can see there where we've marked on the, on the tape. And then we're just running two, uh, I think they're 10 mil uh, diameter bolts directly through in two, uh, in two places there for the stability. Now we've also wrapped the mast around when we stuck it into the pole. <laughs> Look at me, God damn it. Um, when we've stuck it into the pole, you can kind of see in there, see the tape on the inside there, we've built it up a little bit. And then we've done that at the back end as well to make sure it's stable in there. <laughs> Tom and Harry, hello, hello. Here we are just pouring the concrete. I thought I'd throw this in as well, just so you can kind of see the whole process. Uh, the audio all through this part is is non-existent for some reason. The, the camera didn't record any audio, so here we are. This is the first time I'd actually poured uh, any concrete, but some of my mates like Tom, uh, Tom and Harry both had a bit of experience doing it. So what we actually done is we, we dug a bit of a deeper and wider hole uh, down a little bit, and then we kind of formed up this little neat square piece there just to make it look nice. Now it's important here that you have your uh, antenna mast. It's got to be vertical. It's really got to be vertical. Uh, if your uh, <laughs> if your if your mast is not um, vertical at the bottom and at this part, when it gets eight meters up in the air, it's really going to be uh, really bad. So you really want to nail it, you know, down low here. And then I've also got an additional bracing up there. You can see it mounted off the wall and then connected to the, to the mast fire, just a U-bolt. This is the rest of the mast. So I just want to pause here for a minute to apologize. Uh, my audio is a little bit patchy in certain areas, uh, kind of throughout the rest of the video. I had the mic set a little bit too sensitive yeah, forgive me. I haven't made any videos in a couple of months. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit rusty, but yeah. cheers guys. <laughs> Sorry. And the antenna actually mounted on the top here. Uh, it's an aluminium telescopic mast. The first portion of it is already mounted. So I'm gonna actually have to get on the roof to, to put this thing in. Uh, and then there's another section here that unscrews like that and extends out another, I don't know, 
meter and a bit or something. Nearly two meters probably. And then we have the actual antenna mounted already on the top here. It's a nine dBi antenna. I have a bit of B-roll of me, uh, you know, actually installing it over the weekend here. Um, and I'll show you that. But the, the key things that you wanna make sure you don't fuck up is when you're mounting an Omni antenna like this to, a, to a, a metallic pole, you can see here, right? You can see where this metal portion is. This is the portion that you have to mount on, okay? You want all of the, where it, where it turns to fiberglass or if you have a cheap shitty antenna, probably just a plastic, um, this portion here is, is where the radiating element of the antenna is, is, is housed behind, okay? So the main thing that you want to make sure you don't do is this, this portion of the antenna, you know, where it turns to fiberglass here, needs to be um, away from metal. And what I mean is, see how if this, for instance, was, was pulled down a little bit here and I'd have a portion of this piece of the, of the antenna uh, occluded by potentially this, this metallic pole here uh, or, or, or the backing plate here, right? That's not good. That's going to that's gonna, uh, negatively affect your, your, your signal. So the, the thing you want to look out for is just making sure that this is up and above any part of the metallic mounting hardware including the mast okay that's the main thing uh secondary i mean you just don't want to you don't want to um talk down on anything too hard okay you don't overdo it make sure you're not occluding any of the antenna with metallic objects that's all also i mean i haven't made a video in a good couple of months now uh, i've had a lot going on right i've moved houses i've also been building a granny flat so yeah it's taken a lot of time I've been wanting to get back into YouTube and, and, you know, me setting up this antenna mask, finally masked, finally getting around to do that is kind of my excuse to make another video. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Appreciate you all. I'm just going to show you the, um, this is where my miner has been sitting for the past two months or so. Can you even see that? You can kind of see it. Yeah, there's the antenna sitting there. It's just been sitting on this window windowsill here. It's got like line of sight to, you know, the city, and I know there is miners down there, like line of sight here. Um, but I've hardly been getting any, any beacons. Uh, but yeah, that's where it's been sitting for the last two months. So we're gonna do a comparison uh, to that. I'm going to guess that it's going to be way, way, way better. But now we've got to get up on the roof, got to get a, get a ladder and mount this mast up here and, and try not to, try not to fall. Uh, that's the number one priority. All right. So before we get ahead of ourselves, as I already was doing, <laughs> I was like getting the ladder ready to get up on the roof, but I don't have my coax organized yet. So get your coax organized. Uh, what you're going to need is, uh, well, your coax. And I suggest using some of this stuff. So it's a uh, self amalgamating uh, rubber, silicon rubber tape, right? So it's a, a self bonding electrical tape basically. And, and, and what, you, what it is, is it allows you to, when you make this, uh, when you make this connection here between the coax and your antenna, you can just get a really good seal on it. And, and it'll just completely uh, negate the chance of you being able to get any moisture ingress into your connector because moisture is the bane of, of our existence all right you really don't want to get moisture into any of your bits and pieces if you you know if you want this to to last for years and and, and be as hassle-free as you uh, you know you want it to be as hassle-free you don't want to be fucking having to replace shit every couple of years so do it right the first time uh, the tape's fairly expensive you know maybe like 20 bucks a roll or more like something something around that is fairly expensive but you know like it's going to save you climbing up on your roof in in a year to replace your your connectors because they've been filled with water and they're rusted okay so just do it uh do it right the first time <laughs> so uh i'll show you how to do it and also uh keep your <laughs> keep your antenna 
uh, you know, loose in this until you mount your coax. Depending on your, depending on your uh, mounting hardware and your, your antenna, it might be easier to do it, uh, you know, while your antenna's not mounted. And that's the case for mine here, so I'm just having to back it off a little bit. And try to get this out, then I'm going to mount the coax. Snug this back down. And we should be good. And what I'm getting at here is, I mean, I can mount the, uh, I can connect the coax to the antenna without the, uh, without the, uh, you know, while it's snug down. But it's a little bit hard to, to wrap this, this self-amalgamating silicon tape around it. So I've just backed that off. And then you just gotta make sure you get the, uh, get the Dubawaki ends correctly. So I can see there that that's got a little metal rod coming out. The, the, it'll, it'll, look, it'll look like this. Get a metal rod in the middle there, yeah. That's copper rod. And that's what's in here. That's what's in my antenna. You just wanna make sure that you line it up correctly. So you can see this connector here, if it focuses, come on. You can see that there's a hole in the middle of that copper connector in the middle there. This is a female, which goes right onto here. So basically how you wanna do uh, these connectors are you wanna get them together like that, push them in so that they push in and they'll, 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 they'll get to a certain depth. And once they're at that depth, you wanna, you wanna start rotating. You'll see it pull in all nice like. It'll start to get a bit hard like that and you just want to give it a little bit, you know, you, same thing, like hand snug. Not too tight, definitely not like loose. Um, and then, yeah, let's get the uh, self-amalgamating tape on. So, what you want to do with this is, this is going to be a little bit awkward. Uh, with this setup here. I could just take it completely out of this, but I'm too lazy. So you wanna just peel your tape back a little bit here. Peel this shit off it. And the trick is here, you wanna go in the direction of, of, your, of your coax here, right? So if you're, you know, I've tightened this connector clockwise here, so you wanna wrap this around in that same orientation so you're not, you know, potentially loosening it as you're, as you're wrapping the tape around. You know, just best practice, but it's not, gonna, it's not gonna be the end of the world, okay? So if this, if I wasn't mounting this part of the, uh, of, of, of the antenna into this mount here, I would, I would bring this back up here and just wrap the whole way along, but the mounting hardware stops. So, right there, so I'm just gonna hit the connector. The join of the connector's right there. That's what I'm worried about with ingress, and then I'm gonna bring it down here, and then back up, half lap, and then half lap. So basically what you do is, you get it like that, snug it down. This is gonna be a real pain in the ass, but give it a bit of a stretch, like that. This is actually gonna be like impossible. I'm gonna have to take this out, out completely. There you go, learn from my mistakes. All right, so we've just undone that. Got her out. Just gonna give it a little, yep, nice and tight. Not too, too tight. Then again, I've tightened it this way, so I'm gonna wrap the tape in that same orientation, okay? And what's critical with this is you give it a bit of a stretch, okay? So this self-amalgamating uh, silicon tape it bonds up when it's stretched, okay? So you sort of get it in place like this and then sort of stretch it out. Stretch it. Sometimes it can be a bit of an asshole. To get that first bit on.
gonna try like wrap it around stretch sort of like that that's yeah, good enough not too clean but <laughs> could be worse all right and then you just want to keep that stretch happening and then just slowly rotate it around like that and you kind of want to give it a, like a half lap so you sort of you can see here that half of the new wrap of tape is going over uh you know the first wrap finished there so i'm sort of you know going 50 percent overlapping with my previous wrap if that makes sense right and you sort of keep that similar pressure as you go you don't need to get too too silly with it just keep that keep that wrap and again um, You don't need to get too silly with it. The more you go down, the sort of the safer you'll be, but you know, you don't need to go overkill with it, that's for sure. Now I'm gonna go back now. Give it a stretch, go backwards, stretch, backwards, trying to keep it as good to that to that half overlap uh, as we can but you know this is all going to bond up and adhere quite nicely um, shouldn't be a drama and this video you know this isn't aimed at aimed at uh <laughs> antenna professionals by any means okay uh i'm a i'm an rf engineer but i i haven't done much um you know antenna installs myself many antenna installs i've only used this shit a few times so if you're a veteran and you're looking at this guy and this guy's a dickhead this video is not for you this is for people who are who are new who are new and i'm just a little bit less new i guess now, again, you just want to you want to make sure you give it a bit of a stretch. Otherwise, it won't. Um, otherwise, it won't bond up nicely. I just realised that was pretty much out of the fucking frame the whole time. Hopefully, it's not not tea bag. All right. So that's pretty good. Let's get this back into the, the mount and uh, we'll be back. Get this back in. I've just been bit by a fucking green ant. Bastard thing. All right, so I'm, I'm putting this back on here and, and the main thing that I'm being conscious of here is that I don't, uh, is that I don't occlude my antenna with the metal bracket. That's what I don't want to happen. That's the main, the main no-no. Also, don't just use what's in your pocket. Use actual screwdrivers. This thing's a pain in the ass. I'll be back once I'm done. <laughs> and just one note while uh, while I'm doing these up here, it's kind of the same as anything. When you're when you're screwing anything down like this, don't don't sit one screw in there and fucking tighten it the whole way down, right? You, you know, do a little bit at a time. You know, when you're like tightening up lug nuts on your car. You know, you do diagonals, you tighten that one, and then tighten that one, and that one, that one, that one, that one. Same thing, you know. Get that one in a bit, get this corner one in a bit, that one, that one, then tighten, 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 until they're all tightened. So they're all evenly torqued down, you know. You're not going to have this one that's, you know, eaten up 80% of the thread. The other one's only got, you know, 20% on, because it's not, it's not how it's supposed to be done, okay. Now, we don't want this... Uh, this 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 uh, coax is, is eight meters long, right? I don't want this blowing in the wind, and I don't want the whole weight of this coax, you know, sitting on this joint as it's as it's up in the air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to you don't need to use metal bloody zip tie, but I'm I'm zipping it up. I'm securing it to the pole, right? So it'll take the strain and it's not going to be bloody 
straining on the joint of the of the of the coax of the RF connector. I'm taking that strain away with with a with a metal zip tie here. Uh, the reason I've done metal is because a it's what I had, uh, and b is it's not going to degrade in in the the sun. Okay, uh, I'm sure there's UV stable uh, plastic zip ties you can get, but again, uh, I I don't really want to have to be pulling this down in, in a year because you know my zip tie is broken and I've got to go replace it so I'm just kind of doing it right the first time so I don't need to really bugger around uh, in the future so you know really it's probably going to be overkill because for me in my in my case this is probably going to be a game and I'm probably going to be bloody changing this shit out all the time anyway for fun uh, you know, but if you want to have this set up and not need to worry about it, you want it to just work. I don't have the tool for this, so I'm just doing it like this. This is not going to be super duper tight, but I'm just trying to, I don't want it to be super tight either because I don't want it to kink the coax. If you kink the coax, you're fucked. I just want it to support the weight a bit. <sighs> That might not be tight enough. I can move it around a bit there. Okay. All right, that's gonna be tight enough there. So I'm just gonna clip that off. call it a day bit of a bit of a cutting hazard there that's a problem for future reef when he tries to pull that down in five years I'm gonna cut my hand on that but that's what happens there you go I'm also going to run a few more of these okay I'm gonna I'm gonna secure this coax down the uh, down the mast itself with a few more of those um, zip ties as I string it up. And you're gonna see that from a distance in a minute. Let's do it. I think we're good. All right. Now. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a real fan of ladders. I guess I'm not a real fan of heights either. But, uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Just make sure you're not busting up your coax as you move, and especially your antenna. Just making sure the antenna's not resting on anything. Bloody tile roof as well. That's one of the reasons why I didn't mount it to the roof. It's because it's a tile roof. You can mount it to a tile roof. But uh, I don't want to deal with the potential leaking uh, issues. If you're up on the roof, make, make sure you know where to stand, okay? Stand where the batten screws up, because that's where the rails are. And if you're not confident, get someone who is, because it's not worth hurting yourself for a bloody antenna. For a... Now, because I set this uh, mast up a few days ago, and it looked like there was going to be a bit of rain, I, I taped up the top of it here. Uh, to avoid any water ingress because you know I don't want a bloody a mast filled with water no good all right so how's the Arvo <laughs> what a nice afternoon I'm seeing something I'm doing wrong here already so it's got a little line here you bring it down 
down to that line and then you bring that down tighten it up so I see this how this is kinking you want to avoid that so you just pick this up you spool up like that and just unravel it the way it wants to go don't don't fight it you fight the coax you'll end up kinking it and you'll you'll short the you'll short the uh, the outside met, uh, metallic part to the to the to the conductor in the middle and you'll be uh, up shit creek without a paddle all right so I'm gonna throw this down here the uh, the cap is on the end of that RF connector you don't want to do any shit like that if you've taken the cap off because what's going to happen is you get dirt in there and you're basically screwed like you you really want to clean the dirt out if that happens and I've, I've, I've done something stupid here I've bloody I've tightened up this one but I I didn't extend the smaller portion first so let me just fix that <laughs> I'm looking for the red mark or whatever marking on this on this pole as I'm pulling it out otherwise you'll end up just pulling it out too far there's the mark there all right start tightening it down and what that mark is it's just indicating that you're getting close to the end of the of the rod if you keep pulling it you're just going to pull it straight out so you want to get this quite tight to avoid any blowing in the wind up there. It's gonna be a bit of it, you know. <sighs> now, at this height here, I'm gonna give it another. I'm gonna give it another, uh, I'm gonna secure it with another metal zip tie so I avoid it blowing in the wind. And I bloody hope my mic's still on. Because I can't do all this again. <laughs> I rip it all down and start again. <laughs> Safety squints engaged. Again, when you're doing this, you know, you don't want to over tighten it. You crimp that, you kink the coax and you're not in good form. Make sure this is snug. It's pretty snug. All right, we're going up. Let's go. What a sunset. <laughs> Got a view over the city, sunset behind it. You can't see it, but just take my word. Probably might have done that, that zip there a little bit too close to the, uh, to the join here. See how it's sort of bulging out a little bit? It's all right. bother me so I'm just gonna fix it while I'm here another tip you're securing it like that don't secure it too close to your to your part there and snug it down with another zip tie also just makes it look a bit better you know I don't want the neighbors to be Going, what the fuck is this thing? All right, that's it. So we've sealed it, installed it, raised it up, snugged our cable down. A little bit of little bit of wind blowiness there, but she's all right. Could put another one there if I was being pedantic, but not worth it. Right. Now I just got to get back down without busting my ass again. I'm not really a fan of ladders, especially ladders where there's no one holding the bottom of them. Me. Eh? Oh. Right. Oh, so it's 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 looking pretty good. I mean, we're about seven and a half meters up in the air. Uh, we've got eight meters of coax. Um, you know. 
looking at it, man, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Quite high, is what you want. You want to get it up as high as you can. Again, it's, it's, it's well secured. It's all braced there. You can see I braced it off the house. A uh, bit of an overkill, not necessary, because uh, it's concreted in, right? But, you know, it's a little bit of something extra. You know, more is more. Uh, let's go get the miner and, and, and plug it in and <laughs> see how she goes. I'm gonna have to reassert the, uh, the antenna gain and the, and, the, and the mounting height on this bad boy, but uh, that's all right. No dramas. All right. So, we have an unnamed beverage. What is this? That's my mate. My mate uh, works at a brewery and he likes to pull cans off the, off the canning line before they've been labeled. Or oh, I might have done that. Not sure. This is the end of the coax. Antenna's up on the roof. Oh, it's night time now. Uh, and what we have here is a patch cable. Okay, so this this little patch lead here goes from an N-type uh, female adapter to uh, the reverse polarity SMA adapter that goes directly onto the uh, sense cap miner itself. So this is the same connector that the stock antenna comes with uh, on the on the miner, and. Let's attach this to this. The reason why, oh, well, okay, so how to do it is you sort of, with all RF connectors, what you do is you sort of push them on to a point where it stops moving and then you start tightening. You don't want to over tighten it. Now, the reason why I have this patch lead here is, well, having this tiny reverse polarity SMA on uh, the end of this LMR 400 would be ridiculous. I don't know if it could be done you'd need to have some sort of step down um, and I'm also going to be putting the miner in a uh, external housing outside so the the, the miner is going to be inside a box that's connected to it and then this RF connector is going to sit outside the box and I screw the coax on I don't have the box now so I'm just going to screw it on and let it dangle in the breeze out here on the on the outside lounge for now so that's on like fairly snug tight don't want to overdo it. If you have a, if you, if you have a torque wrench, um, you can search uh, the spec on on how tight your specific type of RF connector is. If it's an N type or an SMA or whatever, uh, search the torque spec on it, and you can torque it to the right spec if you want to get silly. But you know, I have a torque wrench out there, but I. It's a bit overkill. It's a bit overkill for this. Then we're just going to put it on here. Make sure you, 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 your hotspot's powered down, okay? Before you before you pull the antenna off or when you're putting a new antenna on. So same thing, all I did was push it in and then tighten it down. Snug tight. There we are. So this connected to the patch connected to the LMR 400, eight meters of it, up to the uh, antenna, which is a nine dBi uh, omnidirectional antenna. Let's plug her all in and then wait and see how it performs, I guess. <laughs> Exciting. Yo, so it's been uh, two days, I think, since I recorded most of that video and since I've had this uh, antenna set up. This is what we got so far. Well, one. Very fluffy little girl. Win. What are you doing? Yeah, stupid. Okay. So, this is what we're talking about. We've got... These are all the uh, witnessed signals that we've received. So, here we are, and then we've witnessed all of these. Um, yeah, very professional. Not even screen recording, but... It's kind of hard to tell here, but here is the, you know, you can see a very uh, obvious uptick, you know, like where did we install the antenna? Uh, probably around about there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's really gone up. Um, 
I'm gonna have an update at a further date here just to get like a, you know, maybe like after a month or so, I'll, I'll post another update so we get more stats. Um, but yeah, another thing I need to bring up, uh, I know people are gonna whinge about it. Where's your lightning arrester? Where's your grounding for your, for your mast? We're gonna be covering that in another video, okay? Uh, lightning arrester, I, I don't think I'm going to install um, and I'll explain why in another video. And uh, grounding for the antenna, I for the, for the mast, I, I am going to do. And I'm going to have a whole video on, on, on setting that up and how to do that. So subscribe if you want to see that. Uh, like and subscribe, you know, if I've helped you out. Uh, thanks for staying around this, this time. It's, it, it's a long video, uh, so I appreciate you. Cheers. Oh, and, and Discord. Uh, if you have any queries, uh, link in the, in the description to join the Discord. Um, there's been a few people coming in there asking questions. Thanks for that. I reply uh, when I can. Um, yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Cheers.